Hey out there, thanks for tuning in. If you live close to me in New Jersey or on the East Coast, you got walloped with some snow, just like we did yesterday and today. I think we got like 12 inches. Yesterday was a snow day. We were off, Diane was off, hung around the house. I made some stew, the best stew yet. I was talking to Diane about getting a day off of school when I was a kid. I swear I was like five or six, seven years old, something like that. And we'd be listening to the radio and I'd be waiting, I grew up in Union Beach. So I'd be waiting for them to say, and Union Beach is canceled too. And I'd be like, Gah! it felt like, it felt like hitting a jackpot, going down to Atlantic City and hitting a jackpot. That's how elated I got, like, yay, the day off of school, awesome. And then the funny thing is, the next thought I had was, how much money could I make shoveling people's sidewalks? I was thinking about this, like, all the way back then, five or six. I'm sure I'm exaggerating. I was probably six or seven or something. But I'm thinking, how much money could I make shoveling people's sidewalks? I can help them and get money. One particular memory, not that great. Somebody gave me a soda as payment after I think I shoveled out their car and their sidewalk. A soda? Come on. Even back in the 70s, that's kind of cheap. I bring up that story because... As long as I can remember, I've had drive to make money. I don't, I don't know where it came from. My parents had great work ethics. And they also, they did try some things as far as being an entrepreneur. None of them really worked out, but they did try. So maybe it came from there. I don't know. What's that saying? Uh, nature versus nurture. Maybe it was, it's in my nature. I was talking to someone today, and I'm not going to mention their name just in case. But they were telling me about how much they disliked their job that they were they're in. They've been there for six years, and they just dislike it. And they've been saying this for years. I started telling them a little bit about, you know, it was difficult for me when I was in a job for three years, and I couldn't stand it to get out of it. Luckily, Diane and I sat down and we talked about uh, me getting into flipping houses. I shouldn't even say flipping anymore because I, I really prefer to hold the houses. For me to get out of that business and be a real estate investor... Thank goodness Diane gave me the push that I needed because here I am now, happier than ever. Now, the person I was talking to on the phone isn't necessarily an entrepreneur, from what I know. Maybe she is. Maybe you are, if you know who I'm talking about. But even if you're not, I could tell you from my experience, I guess the way that I learn is from people telling me about their own experience and not preaching or not giving me unsolicited advice or suggestions. Like, I'm not asking for suggestions a lot of times. I just want somebody to listen to me. But I do enjoy when somebody gives me a personal story of something similar that I'm going through, and I think I learn the most when that happens. So let me tell you a little personal story about that. I've had over a hundred jobs. I'm not saying like a hundred, like I just pulled a hundred out of my, 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 my head and I just say, you yeah, know, I've had over a hundred jobs. No, no, no. I've had over 100 jobs. I don't even know how many. Here's some of them. I was trying to think of all of them and I can't remember all of them, but I know I've worked as a carpenter in a variety of different ways from, you know, being a, uh, a helper when I first started out cleaning up the job sites to being a handyman. I did drywall during the, uh, the summers of, uh, of high school, uh, painting, framing, roofs, building decks. Strictly a contractor I was for a little while. I used to finish basements on my own many years ago. Um, I fabricated countertops with laminate. Um, I was a landscaper, not quite a carpenter, but you know, along those lines. I'm not gonna go into detail of every single job I had, because like if I say carpenter, I could have had 10 different carpentry jobs and then 20 different drywall jobs with different people. I cleaned jewelry, landscaper. I made uh, cold calls. Um, I collected money one time down in Florida. That wasn't that good of a job. Actually, I never enjoyed any, really, of any of these jobs. I say eBayer because I was an eBayer. Diane and I had the store. It was Diane's store. I just was riding her co coattails, and I started selling on eBay. I've been a mortgage broker and banker for many years, different positions, a broker versus banker, but a lot of different companies. I was a turtle fisher down in Florida. Imagine that. I went from mortgage banker, corner office, to fishing for turtles. That was a dirty job. You want to know more? Just let me, just ask me. 
I was a driver, Uber and some other things, the cold caller, like I said. I was a rehab lay counselor, so for people in detox and rehab, I was their go-to guy. I was a mental health worker. Just before I get in, got into real estate investing, that's a job I had for three years. Oh yeah, an infantryman in the army. This job, the mental health worker, I was there for three years and I couldn't stand it. So when I was talking to this person on the phone today, I related that. It took me three years of, I don't like to use the term hate, but it was as close to hating a job as I think you can get. I worked with people that had schizophrenia and were recently released from psychiatric units or hospitals. It was a forensics project. Sounds like lofty. But really what it was, was I was trying to help them get back into society. They had a lot of mental health problems. And on one hand, it was kind of rewarding. On the other hand, the management that was there, we just always butted heads. They had this outlook on life that was just completely different than mine. Now, you needed a bachelor's degree. You had to grovel for that job. You had to have all these other certifications and stuff. I mean, I had to jump through hoops to get that job. And I couldn't stand it. And it sounds like the woman that I spoke to today, you know who you are, is in a similar position. I put up on the board something that's been important to me for many years. The three states of being. It definitely applies to work, but it's really meant to be a life, either philosophy or thought process. And if you could be in one of these three states, life is a lot better. First one is acceptance. Second one is enjoyment. And the third one is enthusiasm. So let me just tell you a little bit about that. Like, as you're going through life, if you're in acceptance, that means that it's not that bad. Like, I think I saw a, um, a metaphor or an example that it's hard to be in enjoyment if you're changing the tire out in the rain, but you can still be in acceptance. But really you want to get into number two, which is enjoyment. You want to enjoy life, you want to enjoy your job, you want to enjoy the work that you do. Now ultimately, if you could be enthusiastic about your job, life, that's like a state of being like you just floating. I'm not always there, but I get there now every once in a while. And it's a nice place to be. I know for me, if I'm not in one of these states of being, that means I'm in non-acceptance. And I gotta pause, I gotta think what I'm doing, I gotta try to, you know, redirect my thoughts and get into a better place and get back into acceptance as soon as possible. I told you about how many different jobs I had because for years, until I was almost 50, matter of fact, I was 50, when I finally got out of the job I was in, and I'm a real estate investor now. 50 years. From a little kid to 50, I struggled. You know, I never had a job longer than three years. I, I swear, I, sometimes I hear my father saying something about that too. Because he was a, a, a career kind of a guy. He worked for AT&T for 37 years. And I never felt, I felt like a square peg. Where did I, where did I put that? I felt like a square peg in a round hole in just about every job I went to. I tried, and I wanted to be that W-2 employee. There's something to be said about getting a paycheck every Friday. You know, getting health insurance, getting a couple of weeks vacation, there's something to be said, and I wanted that. It just won't come my way, I just couldn't fit in. So three years was the longest I ever had a job. So for the person I talked to today, I know you've been in that job for six years. And I know for years we've talked about the struggles that you've had. We've talked about the not that good a pay that you get, that your spouse is behind you if you want to leave, and yet you still cling. You still cling on. Why is that? Why do, we, why do we try to go that route of most resistance? I think it has something to do with the way that we grew up, our beliefs. And then we have these internal conflicts. I once read a book, or I was going to read a book, and I said, what was the name of the title? They call it work for a reason. Stop whining. That says it all. I don't want to whine to people about how, how much I hated my job. I mean, work is work. They call it work for a reason, right? No. Sometimes, sometimes, I know for me, I finally found what I love doing. 
and not everyone is an entrepreneur or, 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 or even should be or even want to be. But maybe they're not doing something that, that they would love to do and they don't have the time because I once made a video about daydreaming is good. You might want to watch that video. Somehow I thought that I was lazy. All the different jobs I had. I've never been lazy. I told you the story when I was like five. I was out there shoveling sidewalks to get a dollar. Or a soda at one time. I wish I remembered that person's name. I was always a hard worker. But in my mind, I thought of myself as being lazy because I couldn't do it the way that I was taught to do it. And the way that we learn how to do it in school and from our parents and from society is you go out and you get a job and you climb the ladder. You keep on accumulating more time off. You better benefits. You get a raise every once in a while. You get that paycheck every Friday. And it sounds good. <laughs> it does, but it's not for me. So I've never been lazy, but somehow I thought that I was. I was really just a square peg. I didn't even know what I wanted. But I know that what I was doing wasn't working. Somehow I had this idea. And I don't know where it came from. Was it from my parents? Was it from society? Was it from school? I don't know. You tell me if you can relate to this. I thought the harder I worked, I was more worthy of, and I left this here because I don't want to get too deep, but I was more worthy of love the harder I worked. You know, the harder the job, you know, the more physical it was. If I was digging ditches and cleaning sewer pipes, I was worthy of some serious love. So I'm not a big fan of giving unsolicited advice or suggestions. However, in this case, I told you a little bit about myself. I told you about the person I spoke with. And I'm going to make a leap here. And I'm going to give some unsolicited advice. First, I'm going to say that life is too short. You know, I don't regret the past. I don't regret the jobs that I had or the things that I did. The position I'm in today, maybe it's even sweeter as a result of those, those other jobs that I had. I don't know. I have to look at it like that because I can't get caught up in morbid self-reflection. But life is short. Having complete safety with no risk is never going to happen. I used to think that, well, I'll get out of this job as soon as this I is dotted and this T is crossed and then I'll do this when this happens. And it never, it never came about. Make the leap. That's my suggestion. Make the leap. What are you really giving up anyway? Like a lot of people maybe think about making the leap. And this particular person talked about the, the health insurance benefits that they get. They're married and they could get health insurance from their spouse, but their health insurance was better. Now, I made another video one time about feeding the machine. And as we get older, because life is short, we have that machine that we have to feed, which is a family and a mortgage and different bills and stuff like that. It's not going to get easier to make the leap in the future. So, my suggestion to you, and you know who I'm talking to, make that leap. Get out of there. You deserve to have some peace and some goodness in your life. Till next time.